In the last video, we did our first full hypothesis test. This is where we created our steps. Step one, we made our hypotheses. This was a left-tailed test since it talked about minority. Then we found our alpha, which is our level of significance. We found our test statistic after finding our p-hat right here. Then we were asked to do the p-value method. You can see that right here. It says p-value method right there. So that means that I'm going to follow along on the right-hand side of the hypothesis test method, which means I'm going to use the p-value approach. Since we were doing a left-tailed test, this is what we were doing in the center here. So you draw a left-tailed picture, you put your z0, which is your test statistic down on there, which is negative 4.129 on my particular example, and the p-value came from the calculator. Then we rejected the null hypothesis because that p-value is very, very, very low, and we reject the null hypothesis when the p-value is less than alpha. That's what it says to do right here. And then we wrote our conclusion using what we learned on section 10.1. So let me Okay, so now we want to do that same idea, but we want to redo step four and five. If you look at the hypothesis test, all the other steps are the same, one, two, three, but four and five have a classical approach option. So we're going to do redo the test, but with just steps four and five. I'm not going to make you redo the whole thing because steps one, two, three, and six would all be exactly the same as what we already did. So let's see here. We're going to redo steps four and five using the classical method. So step four. Step four, if you look at the classical method, since we're doing a left-tailed test, is this picture right here in the center. So you say, I want to draw a left-tailed test. I'm going to draw a normal curve, the left tail shaded, and I need to find negative z alpha and alpha. Okay, well, alpha is 0.01. We knew that because we said so back in step two right here, that alpha is 0.01. So we need to find that z-score. Now you can see I tell you it's negative 2.326. However, where did I get that from? If you look at the inferential statistics sheet, it tells you either use the inverse norm or the bottom row of the t-distribution table. So let me use inverse norm. So um, negative z alpha is equal to inverse norm and then remember you want the area in the left tail. So if you look at what you've shaded, the area in the left tail is 0 0.01. So I want 0 0.01 comma 0 comma 1, which would be approximately negative 2.326. Now let me prove it to you. Second distribution, number 3, inverse norm, 0 0.10. Oh, excuse me, 0 0.01. 0, 1. Go down to paste, press enter, press enter. And see there's negative 2.326. You could also find it from the table. So let me pull up the table. So here's the t-table, and it said the bottom row because the bottom row has the z-scores in them. So let's look at the area in the tail is 0 0.01. See, there it is. So go to the bottom of the 0 0.01 column, and there you can see it's 2.326. So either way you get it, you should get, since it's a left tail test, negative 2.326. All right, now we have to make our decision. Oops, this actually, this part right here was actually part of step four. That's where that number came from. Step five is where we have to make a decision. Are we going to reject the null hypothesis or not reject the null hypothesis? And we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Why? Well, because now if you go back to your inferential statistics sheet, it, you can see Compare the critical value, that's z alpha we just found, negative z alpha, with the test statistic z0. You reject H0 if your z0 is less than your negative z alpha. In other words, if you're off in that tail. So the tail starts at negative 2.326, and our z0, which is negative 4.129, is less than z alpha, negative z alpha. which was only negative 2.326. And yes, you have to write that out. 
So you say what your values are and you say negative 4.129 is off here in the tail. Since it's off in that gray tail, we reject the null hypothesis. And this is how you write mathematically that it's off in the tail. It's in the rejection region is what that's called. That gray region of the tail is called the rejection region or also called the critical region. There we have it. So negative 4.129 is in that critical region, also known as the rejection region. So let's compare what's going on here. So the p-value method and the classical method, and what I've done is I've drawn one graph that kind of has both methods on them at the same time. So you can see over on the left, I have z0. That's the vertical bar right here where the darker region starts. Z alpha, I couldn't put alpha in there, but Z alpha is that bar where the gray region starts. Alpha is technically the entire tail, the gray and the dark charcoal. The P value is only that dark charcoal region. The classical method compares the two Z scores. It says, look, look at the negative 4.1 and the negative 2.3. If negative 4.1 is less than negative 2.3, you reject. And that's what we did right up here. You're comparing Z scores to each other. The P value method compares the areas to each other. This P value area, which is that darker charcoal tail to that alpha, which is that lighter gray tail. All right, so what's similar about these two? Well, one thing is if you reject with one method, you will also reject with the other method, as long as it's the same data and alpha. So don't say when I have you do this for an exam question, don't say I reject with the p-value method and then I do not reject with the this method. No, 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 the classical method. You will reject both ways or not reject both ways. They will be the same. And of course, they have very similar graphs, but they're not exactly the same. Now, what's different about them? Well, the classical method has alpha in the tail and Z alpha, right? Whereas the p-value method uses the p-value in the tail and then has the area um, bounded by Z zero. So they're slightly different from each other. And we already saw how to do all of this with the calculator. So that's done. So we now know how to find a, well, construct a hypothesis test either using the p-value method or the classical method, including all six steps and drawing pictures. We also have seen the differences between the p-value and classical methods, and we'll have to, of course, keep track of that for later reference. By the way, both methods can be used to some extent with the calculator, but the calculator tends to vary on the side of the p-value method. The p-value method is the one that calculators do more often. All right, so let's think about this for just a second. We had a lot of things going on here. To start off with, we had hypotheses. And these hypotheses involve different values. So you have your P and your P0. P0 is 0 0.5, that's the assumed value. Let me type that up. All right, so I typed it all up. So we had our null and alternative hypotheses. And they have two different P's in there. There's the P0, which is that assumed value of the population proportion. It's what you assume to be true, which in this case was 0.5. So that's P0. P0 is 0, actually I should say, P0 is 0 0.5, which is equal to the assumed value of the population proportion from the null, from null. Right, from the null hypothesis and therefore also the alternative hypothesis. And then at least the numbers in the alternative. Then you have peak, letter P itself, but that's an unknown population proportion. It's the parameter. It's the value that you don't know what it really is. You assume it's 0.5 until you can prove it otherwise, but you assume it's 0.5 from your null hypothesis. That's your unknown population proportion. Then you had your p hat. p hat is x over n, which is your sample proportion, and that comes from your that that comes from your data. So that's a statistic because it's from actual data. You know what it is. It was 116 over 304 for this example. You don't know what p is. You think p is 0 0.5. That's what you're assuming, but you don't know it. And then we have p value. p value is the probability of a p hat. Um, probability of p hat or less if p0 is true. So it's probability of being off in this tail. So p hat or less, the probability of that, which is 0. Um, 0. 0.000018. That was the probability of obtaining what we did if p0 is true. Oops. 
there we have it. So the probability of getting p hat or less, um, or more extreme, I guess I should say, or more extreme, so more in the tails, if p0 is true. So sometimes it might be in the left tail, sometimes it might be in the right tail. In this particular instance, it was a left tail. So by extreme, I mean off in the tails. So the chances of getting something that's off in the tails, that's your p-value. Okay. So four different p-values, and you got to keep them all straight. p0 is the assumed true value. p equals p, just plain p, equals the unknown population proportion that, again, you assumed to be the p0 value. p hat is your sample statistic right, from your data, and then p-value is the probability of getting that sample statistic or even more extreme off in the tails if p0 is true like we thought it was. All right, let's pause right here and we'll come back and discuss statistical significance. Actually, no, I think we can do it right now. Let's see. If a p-value is 0.06, is that result statistically significant? at the 0 0.01 or 0 0.10 level. So remember that statistical significance means that um, the observations reserved are very unlikely, so we reject the null hypothesis. See that right there? That's key. So we reject the null hypothesis. That's what's going to be significant to you. It's not significant to let the null hypothesis stand. The null hypothesis is what you assume to be true, right? So what's significant is if you reject the null hypothesis, if you're able to toss that null hypothesis out. All right, so is this one significant? Yes, it is. Now let's explain. The p-value, we would reject the null h0, which is statistically significant since the p-value which is 0 0.06 is less than the alpha oops, which is 0 0.10 remember we always reject if your p-value is low you know, let me go back to the table right here so you reject H0, the null hypothesis, if your p-value is less than alpha. And since our p-value is 0 0.06 is less than alpha, which is 0 0.10, keep in mind right here, this bit right here is your alpha. So when they say level, that means the level of significance, that means that your alpha is 0 0.10. What if it was p-value 0 0.06 and um, the alpha was 0 0.05? Well, that would not be significant. There we have it. So we would not reject the null hypothesis, which is not statistically significant, because if you let the null hypothesis stand, that's not a big deal. And that's because the p-value, which is 0 0.06, is not less than the alpha value, which is 0 0.05 in this instance. You want to be less than alpha in order to reject. Now, last but not least, is a p-value of 0 0.04 more statistically significant than a p-value of 0 0.06? And the answer to that is a big fat yes. Now, let me explain why, and let me I will be right back with it all typed up. Okay, so the lower the p-value you have, the stronger, i.e. more evidence, that you have against the null hypothesis, H0. In other words, you're going to reject H0 more often with a lower p-value than with an, a higher p-value. Consider this example. If alpha was 0 0.05 and you had a p-value of 0 0.06, that's not less than alpha 0 0.05, so you would not reject the null hypothesis here. But if alpha was 0 0.05 and the p-value was 0 0.04, then you would reject it, which is backing up what I'm saying. You're going to reject more often with a p with a lower p-value. Right? So lower p-values are better. And I just typed that up here. Lower p-values are better. They're more significant. They're going to mean you're going to reject the null hypothesis more. In general, we want low p-values. P-values. There, I got it all to fit on the page. All right, we're done with that bit. And we'll talk a bit more about p-values in the next videos.